Hello, future scientists, dreamers, and doers. Let's make science an adventure worth pursuing. I'm your resident scientist, Mr. Pence, and we're about to embark on a journey that will not only inform you, but might just spark your scientific curiosity. So grab those notebooks, because class is in session. And galaxies bright With Mr. Pence as our guide We'll take flight From planets and nebula The universe will see Science with Mr. Pence Where wonders run free Exploring the cosmos From near to afar Unlocking the secrets Of each shining star With every new question And every great find The mysteries of space Will open our mind Science with Mr. Pence Let's reach for the skies Discovering the universe With curious eyes From the depths of the stars To the comets that soar Science with Mr. Pence There's always more in store Have you ever wondered why our planet has different seasons throughout the year? You might already know that the sun is the main source of heat, but how does that work with seasons? Is the earth closer to the sun in summer and further away in winter? No. What it all boils down to is something really simple. Earth's seasons are the result of the earth's tilt on its axis. As the earth orbits the sun, Different parts of the planet lean closer to the sun, and that is what makes our seasons change. Let's take a closer look at why this happens. When one part of the Earth is tilted towards the sun, it gets more direct sunlight. That's when we experience summer. The warm, long days, outdoor fun. That's what summer's all about. Now, on the other side of the Earth, we get winter. Shorter days, cooler temperatures. That's what Mr. Pence is all about. But it's not all about just summer and winter. We've also got spring and fall, too. These two seasons happen during the in-between times when the Earth isn't tilted towards or away from the sun. When spring starts, we have something called vernal equinox. During the vernal equinox, day and night are about the same length. That's why we see new life, like flowers blooming, animals becoming more active. In the fall, we have autumnal equinox. That's where day and night are equal again. This is when we see the leaves change and get ready to fall from the trees. Now, let's talk more about what we mean by direct sunlight and indirect sunlight, because that's a big part of why seasons happen. Direct sunlight is when the sunlight comes straight from the sun to the earth. It's like a spotlight hitting the earth, making a place feel warm and bright. Think of summer during this season, the part of earth that is tilted towards the sun. That's why we get the direct sunlight, making it hot and sunny. Now, the indirect sunlight, on the other hand, is when the sunlight arrives at an angle. It's not as strong as the direct sunlight, so it feels less warm. In the winter, Parts of the Earth that are tilted away from the sun get the indirect sunlight, causing it to be cooler, having shorter days. During spring and fall, Earth is in a position where it's not leaning too much towards or away from the sun. That means the sunlight isn't too direct or too indirect. And that's why we have milder temperatures and more equal day and nights during this season. Now, let's think about something really crazy. The polar extremes. At Earth's north and south poles, things get really interesting when it comes to the seasons. These regions experience something very special. Six months of continuous daylight followed by six months of unending darkness. Imagine living at the North Pole and South Pole during polar summer. It lasts about six months. These are areas that are tilted towards the sun. That means they receive almost constant direct sunlight, creating an endless day. 
the polar inhabitants experience 24 hours of sunlight. Now, this allows them to do all sorts of activities, though, in the middle of the night, even. But as Earth continues its journey around the sun, the poles start to tilt away from it. This shift brings around the polar winter. This lasts also about six months. During this time, the poles receive almost no direct sunlight at all, plunging them into a prolonged period of darkness. In the polar winter, the residents of these regions adapt to life in almost total darkness. They use artificial light to go about their daily activities, and night can seem never ending. The poles' unique seasons are vivid examples of the Earth's axial tilt influencing the lengths of daylight and darkness in different parts of the world. It's a remarkable demonstration of the science we've been discussing. But what about if you needed to figure out is it summer or winter when you're looking at a chart? Let's take a look at that. You see the sun and the earth, but you see the earth four different times. This is representing where the earth is in its revolution or its orbit around the sun. If you notice, the axis is tilted either towards or away from the sun. So the northern hemisphere is pointed towards, pointed away, or half and half, depending on where you're looking at. Let's make this a little clearer and put the equator into place. Now you can see right here, you've got the northern hemisphere, the top half of it here, is pointing towards the sun, while the southern hemisphere is pointing away. So if we're looking at that, let's label that A. This means at position A, it is experiencing summer because it's pointing towards the sun. Now the neat trick here is, once you've figured out where summer is, you now know where the rest of them are. You don't have to figure them out. You just have to go in order. And like most things in outer space, we're gonna go counterclockwise. So the next spot we're gonna go is to B. If A is summer, the very next thing would be fall. So B would be fall. If we go again, that would now be winter. And if we go one more time, we're at spring. Now, whatever's happening on one side of the planet, the opposite is happening on the others. So if we add those in, if at A, we're looking at summer, then the opposite of that is winter at E. And if B, we're looking at fall, the opposite of that is spring. Remember, we're going counterclockwise. That's it, it's really simple. You just find where summer is, that's the one that's pointing towards the sun, and that's summer. Then you go counterclockwise, and label the rest of your sons. It's a pretty neat trick. But wait, are you one of these people that live in 3D? And this 2D model is just a little confusing? Well, I've got something for you too. Okay, we're gonna look at this 3D model. Right now, all of the Earths are pointing towards the sun. This one's pointing this way, this one's pointing this way, this one's pointing this way, and this one is pointing this way. But if we change that, this now is no longer pointing at the sun, and it's also not pointing away from the sun. It's kind of pointing to the left there. If we change this one, it's now pointing away from the sun, and we are looking at the northern hemisphere right now. And then if we change this one as well, it also is no longer pointing at the sun right here. 
So now, from here, you can see that only one of them is pointed at the sun. It is pointed at the sun right there. It's pointing at it. With this one, is not pointing at the sun, this one is not pointing at the sun, and that one is pointing away from the sun. So these are neither nor pointing towards or away, and that one is pointing away, this is pointing towards. So in this model, we can very clearly see which one's the summer, because it's the one pointing towards the sun in the northern hemisphere. And then from there, we'll just go around. So this is summer, this will be fall, this will be winter, and this will be spring, and back to summer. So hopefully the 3D model will help you a little bit more if the 2D model did not. And that's the fundamental science behind Earth's seasons. It's mind-blowing how a simple tilt can cause such fascinating changes in our seasons. As you continue your scientific journey, always remember that understanding these natural phenomena is the key to unraveling the universe's secrets. As always, I'm Mr. Pence. Your curiosity is your compass. Keep following it. Until next time.